these two pics that you are staring at right now are of Patricia Spencer left, and Pamela Hobley right, tonight we will be diving into their disappearance. So before we move on, get your tea, turn off those lights and relax, as we enter the world of the disappeared. Patricia Spencer and Pamela Hobley were two American teenagers who went missing in Oscoda, Iosco County, Michigan on Halloween. They did what any teen did, committed truancy together. Patty, who was 16 years old, was born on January 10, 1953 and Pamela, who was 15 years old, was born on May 24, 1954, both were considered to not be friends. The authorities said their bodies have never been found, but yet they believe that homicide may have been committed about an hour after the girls were abducted. But nonetheless the police try to give out the description and birthdays of both girls every year and they are as follow, Patricia and Patty Spencer was estimated to be between 5 minutes 3 seconds minus 5 minutes 4 seconds tall and weighed between 120 and 145 pounds. Her eyes were blue, her hair was brownish blonde, and she wore glasses, although she didn't have them on October 31st. When last seen, she wore a brown pullover with a matching skirt and a pair of high-heeled shoes. A jacket with a gray and green plaid design and a necklace decorated with a peace sign was also in her possession. She had at least one known scar, due to a dog attack on one of her legs and Pamela Sue Pam Hobley was 15. Her hair and eyes were brown, and she was between 5 feet 6 inches and 5 feet 8 inches tall, and weighed about 110 to 115 pounds. She had distinctive marks, namely two scars, one near her nose and the other by her mouth, although some sources state the latter was a birthmark. Hobley wore a white imitation fur coat edged with brown, a plaid skirt, a shirt of an unspecified color, high-heeled shoes, and white socks. It is known that Hobley had been engaged in activities of which her family did not approve. Rumors also have circulated that she, along with Spencer, may have experimented with drugs and alcohol. Hobley had apparently accepted a marriage proposal prior to her disappearance. On the night day the girls went missing, Hobley told her mother and three sisters that she planned to return home after attending her high school's homecoming football, game and a Halloween party. When she was absent after her family, returned from trick or treating, her fiancé informed her mother that she had not arrived at the party. Hobley's mother then called other parents and learned that Spencer never arrived at the party either. Eventually, their absence became a missing person, investigation and police requested information from the community for assistance in discovering their whereabouts. For the first week of the investigation it was speculated that they were runaways with the intent to travel to Flint, Michigan. Hobley's sister, Mary Burrell, expressed her doubts that this was a case of such nature, citing the positive events that had taken place in the time before the girls went missing. Both girls were reportedly close to their families and did not bring their purses, identification or extra clothing, when they left, indicating that they did not disappear voluntarily. Initial reports stated the girls were last seen walking together away from Oscoda High School. However, a witness later stated that he picked them up as they were walking along River Road and dropped them off in downtown Oscoda. Police cite further undisclosed information to indicate the girls were downtown that day. Investigators suspect that the girls continued hitchhiking, and were abducted by two or more assailants and eventually murdered, though very few leads were ever uncovered, leading to a cold case. A link to the unidentified Oakland, County child killer has been explored, though this seems unlikely. Hobley's family posted, a $1,000 reward for any information to locate Pamela or to bring any possible murderer to police custody. In 1985, police were told that the two were murdered by two area men, and buried near a barn, noted to be a popular location, for teenage parties. Decades later, the local chief of police directed an investigation of this suggestion and a search of the area, with aid of cadaver dogs, which turned up no detectable evidence that human remains, were at the scene. It is unknown if the man that owned the property at the time has been considered a person of interest. Other places that were known to be frequented by teenagers were also searched to no avail. Authorities later arrested a man, who said he had information on the girls. Now this man has since passed away, but he claimed to have transported the girls to a abandoned building, but police followed that lead and it was found not to be credible at all. A second individual claimed that he had given the girls a ride to a gas station about five blocks from where they were last seen, but the thing is this second individual also claimed to have been questioned about statement before, but it was never recorded, and that alleged statement is now a true statement and police considered that as the last time the girls were ever seen. 
now 60 plus years on, Mary Burrell, the sister of Hobley, has continued to show support for the case, most notably at a state event known as Missing in Michigan, where family members of missing Michigan residents rally alongside law enforcement and share details of such cases. The pair have both been entered into national databases such as the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the NAMIS and the DOE network to gain awareness, tips and the latter, possible matches with unidentified individuals. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children used a technique known as age progression to illustrate an estimated likeness of how the pair could look if they were still alive, Spencer's showing a target age of 60 and Hobley's at 57. Hobley's dental charting and both subjects' DNA profiles were obtained and were used to compare against unidentified decedents. Neither of the girls have fingerprints on file, and Spencer's dental records are also unavailable. As they neglected to carry any form of identification, physical data such as dental records and DNA would be needed to identify their bodies if they were to be found. A new detective was assigned to the case in 2010 and proceeded to interview witnesses again in hopes to uncover new information about the case. In 2013, police released a statement indicating they had a person of interest in the case, but they still needed additional information for the case to continue.